Hey, hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, backlit. It's just that time of year, lighting just sucks no matter what I do, it's no good lighting. Things are cooling off. Might be some frost in the forecast next week. I wouldn't be surprised. I wanted to talk about this variegated sea hibiscus before, well, before I kill it. <laughs> Not really, I don't plan on killing this plant. This isn't really going to be a care video. This is more just a season in review. I've mentioned before, if I haven't grown the plant at least four seasons, I don't really like to talk about the care because I can't offer like first person insight as to how to take care of them all year round. So this is a spotlight, just to look at how pretty this plant is. Here's what I did for it this season, what I plan on doing for it during the winter time. Maybe people will be able to offer some tips if you've ever overwintered them indoors. I have some notes on them if you're just curious about the plant and wanna grow them. And yeah, I thought it'd be a good idea to get this one on camera and have a good look at it in all of its glory before I take it inside and maybe kill it. I don't think I will though. Let's talk about it. This is the variegated sea hibiscus. Formerly hibiscus talaceus, now it's teleparite, teleparite. It's up here on the screen, <laughs> talaceum. I got this plant in a plant haul. You can't even see that. I unboxed this in a plant haul months ago, back in April, I believe it was, from Top Tropicals is where I got this. And it was just a little thing. Just a puny little few sticks, not much to it and it has done a lot of growing. I've had to repot it twice already. You can see those roots coming out the bottom. It should probably get another repot. I'm gonna think on that one. This isn't the best time to do a repotting. The variegated sea hibiscus, I'm, do I need to talk about why it's awesome? I'm gonna look at it. Great big heart-shaped leaves with all kinds of intense tricolored variegation. Newer foliage comes out this beautiful, vibrant red. Well, this isn't the most vibrant one. Where's a prettier one? The newer foliage comes out of beautiful reddish burgundy color with hints of pink in it and then they fade off into more of a white they don't hold those colorful tips as you can see from looking at the rest of the plant part in the background noise there's a plane going over i the leaves sometimes will come out more plain but then they'll put out newer leaves that have a lot of variegation on them so it doesn't seem like it's the kind of plant where you have to go in and do any pruning to maintain the variegation but comment down below let us know if you know otherwise. Just a gorgeous ornamental plant. They do produce flowers. This one only gave me one flower this season. It's just a tiny little yellow flower that turned kind of an orangey color later in the day. I thought that was neat that it changed color and then it died because, you know, hibiscus. A lot of them only hold their flowers for one day or a mallow, I should say, since they reclassified it. I have grown this one in varying conditions, part to full sun. It seemed perfectly happy with a little bit less light. This would probably get somewhat stringy and stretched out. In fact, as the day lengths have changed and the sun has shifted, there is a little bit of stringiness there, but it's not too bad. These are water and nutrient hogs. Been on drip all season long, so that's made a very big difference, but it lets you know when it needs some water, that's for sure. There are only a couple occasions where my drip wasn't running quite right and it got droopy from the drip being off for like, I think it was maybe one day. As far as fertilizing goes, I made sure to amend that potting mix with land and sea compost and regular compost. And I probably topped it off about once a month. And I also use a liquid fertilizer as well and a slow release in that potting mix. They like a lot of fertilizer. Like I said, this is on its second repot since what, April or May, whenever I got this in the mail. That's a lot. This thing was really small when I got it. Maybe 18 inches tall, somewhere in that vicinity. I don't know probably about three and a half to four feet tall right now. And it would likely be even bigger had I repotted it, I'd say a month or so ago. It probably could have used that repot. From what I've read, they're supposed to be pest and disease resistant. We will find out about that. <laughs> Give this a winter inside in the growth space with the other plants. Learn very quickly if it is pest and disease resistant. I haven't seen any mealies or aphids or spider mites or anything on it so far, but yeah, that could change. Hard to say. Most of the information on these is about how to grow them outdoors. I really haven't been able to find substantial information on growing this plant as a house plant. There's a little bit out there, but not a ton. What we know about a plant with how they grow outdoors doesn't always apply to how they're going to behave in the house, right? So you just have to give that time. Watch and learn, see what happens. They propagate via cuttings, turn them in late winter, early spring. That would be when you'd want to do that so that they have all their new growth to go ahead and flower out on. This is a tropical type hibiscus, so it's not one that I'm going to be allowing to experience too much cold. I mean, we've been dropped into the 40s and upper 30s here and it hasn't seemed to mind at all. 
but it hasn't been wet when it's been doing that, and that can make a big difference. It's also on our concrete slab that radiates all that warmth back up during the nighttime, so that probably makes a difference as well. I'd say those temperatures generally probably aren't recommended for them. Just because I got away with it doesn't mean it's the right thing for the plant. So my plans during the winter with this plant, basing off of how I've grown other hibiscus and other just shrubby tropical plants, what I plan to do is keep this in a space in my grow area in the garage that has a good amount of airflow or as much as I can give it. You know, I pack a lot of plants in there. I have a feeling that if this doesn't have much airflow, then the sides that are pressed up against things will probably start to look crummy and not do as well. These leaves just, they, they look like they wouldn't respond well to that. I don't know. I'll keep it raised up off the ground so it's not in contact with the cold cement floor. I have styrofoam down on the ground so that helps with that, but I'm going to keep it up even higher because just a few feet up in the air, it's even warmer than down by the ground. So that'll help keep the root zone from getting too cool. And then I will reduce the watering and just observe to see what the plant wants, right? This, I've talked about this plenty of times when it comes to not knowing how to water a plant. It's just something you got to figure out by paying attention to how much water you're giving the plant and uh, the time between when it starts to droop and you need to water again. This will probably be fairly similar to a lot of the plants I keep in the grow space. It has developed a pretty decent size woody base to that trunk in there, which is good because that means there's more room for air. <laughs> Why I'm setting it up like I'm going to kill this plant. I don't think that that's going to be the case. But what I mean there is it will take the plant a longer time to start to shrivel and look sad. If it's shriveling and looking really sad, and that means I've waited too long to water, I just look for a slight droop in the leaves and then I water the plant. I likely won't be worried about fertilizer with this during the winter time unless it's showing me that it wants to grow. If it's putting out lots of growth and it doesn't just have it's fun little section in there where it holds on to everything. Then maybe I'll fertilize, but it'll be with a weak diluted fertilizer just because I wanna see how the plant responds to that. And if it turns out that this is going to be a really thirsty plant, which will really probably depend on how warm I can keep the grow space, I'll probably be keeping the grow space between 50 to 75 degrees, somewhere in there. It's always hard to say what the winter's going to be like, and that really determines how warm I can keep the space. Uh, and there are some other things I'm waiting on finding out to develop with the electric out there. But if I'm able to keep it warmer than that, then I will. The warmer it is, the more the plant's going to want to grow, so then the more water it'll need, and then potentially fertilizer. But I would imagine with the temperature probably being between 68 and 75, that's probably going to be the average area where it will sit, that it's just going to be like a normal house plant. Want to drink probably every seven to 10 days, but we will see. If need be, I can always put some wicking cord on this, and that'll take care of that if I can't keep up with watering, but I doubt that'll be a problem. The only reason I mention that is because I do have this potted up in Kokebop, which is a soil that I really like, but it doesn't retain moisture for very long. I know coconut's supposed to, but it's just a very, very breathable mix that I don't know if I would use again for this particular plant. Because like I said, I had to keep the drip running on this plant a lot. Yeah, it won't be a big deal if I have to do that. I am also wondering if there's going to be greenhouse shock with this plant. I've also been wondering if there's going to be shock with this plant. Anytime I've relocated the plant, it's moved around a few different spots in the garden. It hasn't seemed to skip a beat or care at all, but that's still not the same as moving them inside into that grow space. I have fans in there and a lot of artificial lighting, but it's just not the same. Also, I should have mentioned, look how cool that growing apex is in there. Isn't that neat? The way they have like a calyxy type formation in here that the new growth comes out of. Gives me justicia vibes, but not quite there. A the tiny little baby leaf that comes out. The leaves do start off smaller. They come out itty bitty, just like you see here, and they will open up quite large. This is still a small plant. As the plant gets bigger, the leaves will start to get much bigger too. Not the leaves it already has, but as the plant ages and puts it, you know what I mean, new growth. This is just what they look like coming out of a three to four foot tall plants. They're big, papery, have that fun heart shape to them. Nice big, chunky leaves. Yeah, these leaves are still rather small. Where these can be grown outdoors and in the ground, these can get pretty big. Like what, 20 to 35 feet tall? Maybe even bigger than that. That's gonna vary depending on where you live, your amount of rainfall, how close you are to the coast, those sorts of things. How you keep them pruned is also a factor that goes into that. From everything I've read about them and been told from some of you, they respond very well to pruning, so I'm not concerned about it getting too big because I should just be able to prune this back. In fact, I was thinking that I will probably standardize this. This branch down here, if that were to come off along with those two right there, 
and then one on the other side, then this will start to take on more of a, well, standardized tree form instead of a great big bushy shrub. They will mature and do that on their own over time, but in a pot when they're getting moved in and out of the house, I don't really know how quickly they would do that. I just know with my patients, instead of waiting like five to 10 years since it's in a pot and it's going to take a long time to get that mature size, I would rather just start to prune it up, get some of the lower growth out of there, which will also make it easier to water the plant, not having to like work the watering can or the hose around the lower limbs to get the water into the pot then have that fun look kind of like a topiary for a while but it'll fill out you've seen it like a standardized fiddly fig but way cooler right i mean come on like a it doesn't doesn't even come close to this thing so much prettier oh, beauty's in the eye of the beholder i know there's some fiddly fig heads out there who are going to be upset by that comment it's okay those are nice plants too so the main points that i have that i've noticed with the plant and from what i've surmised from reading about this family of plants online has been to do what you do with a lot of hibiscus and keep them very well watered and keep the soil around them very organically rich. Liquid fertilizers are great for giving the plant a quick boost, but really with hibiscus getting around those roots onto the top of the soil with a compost does make a big difference in the appearance of their foliage, the sturdiness of their growth, and you just don't have to worry about things being stretched out and lanky and leggy looking. Hibiscus love those nutrients, so can't really go wrong with compost. Well, that's not necessarily true. You don't want anaerobic bacteria down there because then you, well, that's when root rot starts to happen. That's always something to avoid. Compost can bind up in the soil. It can start to make things kind of muddy and mucky. You can start to have some anaerobic action down there where there's not enough oxygen. That's what that means, anaerobic. Not enough oxygen around the roots. Too much moisture down there and then things like root rot can happen. So have to be careful when mixing any type of compost into a potting mix, right? That's why when I do it, I just do a sprinkle on top and top dress it, you know, just like, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch and work that into the surface of the soil. That's been more than enough. I used the land and seed compost and then I used one that was just like leaf mold and mushroom compost. Didn't really notice whether or not the plant responded differently to either one. That's totally normal for an organic type fertilizer. They, they take longer to see a response from, but they uh, tend to have a longer lasting effect, which is why I prefer to fertilize in that manner with a plant like this, with most hibiscus in general, and my heliconias and several others. All right, that's gonna do it though. Just a chat about what I've noticed with the plant, what I plan on doing with it, and comment down below. Tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciated. I know when I first talked about this plant when I unboxed it, some of you had mentioned that you have grown these indoors during the winter time. So go ahead and offer whatever you have down there. If you're watching this for care information, look down in the comments, see what other people have to say in addition to whatever I've talked about in the video. Always nice being able to learn, grow, and thrive as a community that way. It takes a team. Have a good look. Take it all in because who knows, beautiful plant might not be here next year. I don't think that that's going to be the case. So far, it seemed pretty sturdy. I imagine it'll probably do just fine during the winter time. Hey, thanks for hanging out. Hope everybody's doing well. I'm having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. Ah, this plant is so beautiful. Beautiful, inexpensive, and sturdy. That's the other thing I should have mentioned. You know, very good at plants. Sometimes they can be hard to find. I, I haven't noticed a shortage of these online, so that shouldn't be a problem. They shouldn't be expensive, they shouldn't be hard to find, so I wouldn't have them shipped during the winter. Maybe wait till spring when things were warmer. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.